guys welcome to my video my channel who knows where this is going to end up anyway jumping straight into today's video it is my 10 top tips for writing a personal statement so this is midwifery aimed um obviously some things can relay over to different subject areas but um I'm kind of focusing on midwifery because it's aimed at the people on my account, which is midwifery related accounts or nursing. You know, some of the things definitely do overlap. Gaima, so I'm nowhere a tutor, nowhere an expert in writing personal statements. Wanted to get that out there. If I say something you don't agree with, great. You know, we're all entitled to our own opinion and we all do things differently. Um, but I am someone that applied, you know, independently. I wasn't with a college or like an access course. I did it off my own back. Um, and I got in on my first cycle. I like to think I wrote quite a good personal statement that really did, you know, portray everything about myself. So that's why I'm just going to be sharing some of the tips, the tricks that I used when writing my personal statement. You sit back, grab yourself a biscuit, get a snack. Might be a long one because I waffle on a lot. So yeah, sit back and enjoy. So if I'm looking a little bit to the side, um, I have some notes and there's a lot of information here, so I need my notes. So, um, that's why I'm, you know, going like this, looking back and forth. But anyway, tip number one, and that is start as you mean to go on. So this is so important when you're opening any piece of writing, I think, whether it's an essay, whether it's, whether it's even like a story or, you know, something that's like narrative, you want to have a great opening statement paragraph introduction because what that does is it makes the reader go okay i want to read the rest of this because i kid you not some universities that have countless personal statements to read through will get to a point where if your first opening statement has spelling mistakes has incorrect terminology isn't selling yourself in the midwifery related role or something like that or doesn't really grab their attention at all they might not read your personal statement and it's horrible to say but it's so true because they have so many to go through you really want to grab the attention from the get-go the biggest thing that i would say about your introduction um, opening statement type thing is make sure it relates to the rest of your personal statement because if you make a claim or if you make a statement that's completely alienated from the rest of you know the rest of your writing then it's really not going to flow and it's also going to make the admissions tutor think that you don't know what you're talking about or you're just putting things in there to make yourself look good and you don't really know how to relate that into a midwifery or b anything else that you've written about in your whole entire personal statement so there are so many ways you can start a personal statement and it depends on you depends on what you're wanting to do you know it depends on like the tone of the rest of your writing there's so many things um some options i'll give you two options and these are probably one of the most popular options so option number one is to start with a direct quotation so this has so many positives and negatives to it so that's something that you need to go away and look at and it really depends so if there's a quote that really really speaks to you and it's always spoken to you or it's you know it's got relation and context to the rest of your statement then why wouldn't you put it in but it's when people will literally go and search on the internet midwifery quotes and then you just find me like oh yeah that looks cool you know and then you pop it in and it's just it's like it doesn't fit in and that's when you know if it doesn't add quality to your personal statement do not put it in because don't forget you do not want to be wasting your words and your lines on your introduction or your opening statement so definitely be careful but with quotes you can obviously shorten them um you know it's completely up to you but it does depend on yourself if you've got something that speaks to you personally and um, for me a quote wasn't something that i wanted to do um, I just didn't think it fitted in with my tone of writing. Um, so I went for like one of the main second options and that was to start with like an opening statement. So it was like a summative um, sentence and it was basically along the lines of midwives are. Um, obviously I'm not going to say what I wrote because that's my personal statement um, but 
you know, it's looking at what you feel the midwives are. What do they do? What do they bring to the table? And like, you can literally sum that up in a sentence. I know when you're thinking about it, it's like, I can't sum that up in a sentence, but you can, you can, you can make it snappy, you can make it short and you can make it really, really stand out. So that's definitely something else to look at, have a play around with words, see what kind of goes in the best order and see what kind of grabs your attention the most. I would say about your introduction, a lot of people kind of go along the lines of, I want to be a midwife because. Now, personally, I wouldn't recommend going in like that. I definitely don't think it has the most expansive, um, you know, wording. I don't really think it doesn't stand out so a lot of people have been saying how can i make my statement stand out there isn't like a black and a white how you can make your statement stand out there's so many different bits that go together to making it stand out but it's definitely very individual like you need to properly speak from yourself your experiences your actual views um rather than taking someone else's because it's then that it just sounds like it's been auto typed you know it's just not individual to you so that's how you make it stand out but I would try and use when I was writing my personal statement the thesaurus was my best friend I could you not like do not where you can use the same noun twice try and mix it up a little bit so with like I said the opening statement I would like to be a midwife because try and use things like I endeavor to it is my aspiration to you know, you want to make it sound a little bit wordy because that really does grab the eye of the reader. Because you also need to remember that the admissions tutors are looking at if you can write at an academically high level in your personal statements, because that's something that you're going to be expected to do at university when you're writing essays. You know, when you're doing all that, that is something that they are going to be looking at. So, yeah, you want to start it off with a bang, keep it short, snappy, don't use up too many of your lines and make sure it speaks from yourself. Don't take someone else's introduction and just plop it in there because they might know. They do, but you cast checks for any similarities in your personal statement and B, they'll have probably read it in the past 10 statements they will have read. So it doesn't really make yours any different. Okay, straight on to tip number two. This is very important and I can't stress this enough this can be a make or break in your personal statement and that is using correct terminology and key words you might have heard them referred to as buzzwords before but you need to get these in they will really grab the attention of the reader and they will really make your statement stand out from the rest so the correct terminology etc is really really helpful if you're dedicating a paragraph or part of your statement to a um, topic that interests you or a specialist topic so if, you know i mentioned these a little bit later on but say delayed cord clamping something like that you're going to want to really talk about skin to skin contact you're going to want to talk about mother and baby relationship. You're going to want to talk about oxytocin. You're going to want to get all those juicy words in because they love it. Love it, love it, love it. The thesaurus is your friend. Do not repeat words like, like. Do not repeat the same word. And is a very, very common word. And it's thrown in there so much. Or I would, I want. All these things, there are so many alternatives. Just go on to the thesaurus and honestly, it will change your writing, I promise. So here are a few keywords that I would note down and I would try and get in there if you can. We have women-centered care. We have advocate. We have, looking over here, <laughs> informed choice, continuity of carer, safety, communication, midwife-mother relationship, Resilience, consent, dignity, advocate, autonomous, practitioner, empathy, and compassion. Try and note those down and try and get them in. Obviously, don't just randomly plop them somewhere because it won't read well. But, you know, look into what those mean. Look into what they mean in midwifery and it will flow in your writing when you can just pop those in. And it will really get your reader to be like, okay, she knows her stuff. So, yeah. That is tip number two. My mouth is so dry because I'm talking so much. I mean, I talk a lot normally, but um, parched, as they say, a little bit parched. Anyway, jumping straight into tip number three. So tip number three, and this is very important, and so many people don't really understand this one, but that's to have a clear and defined 
structure. The most important things when writing your personal statement is to stick to the same tense of writing. If you don't understand what that means, I'm not going to waffle on about that for too long because I'm not very good at speaking what's in my mind, hence why I have notes here. Um, but that's something that you can have a read about. Things on like Bite Size, you know, BBC Bite Size, things like that, they will have information about the tense that you're writing in. And it's very important and it's very, very easy to slip between tenses. Sometimes it can work, very rarely though. So you want to find a tense that you like to write in, you know, that expresses yourself the best and stick to it. Please stick to it. So you may or you may not know that on your UCAS personal statement, you have 4,000 words or 47 lines, whichever you reach first. And it's not a lot. It's, it sounds a lot, like I'm saying it right now. It is not a lot. You reach that so quick. My biggest stress was trying to sell myself in as little as that words. That is why it's so important to have a structure, have a plan, stick to it so that you get everything in and you don't waffle on about a single thing for too long. It's hard to kind of individualise how many lines you should be dedicating to each thing. If you have a look online, there are some kind of like rough drafts of what you can be doing, um, but it's very individual to the person. Um, I didn't stick to a plan. I just kind of went with what I thought was right. Um, you know, but my biggest tip in this is to have a plan. So I'm very much a visual person. So I like mind maps, you know, spider diagrams, whatever you call them. And I split my personal statement up into five parts. So again, this depends. You can combine parts. Some of these are combined subjects, things. Um, you can make it less, you can make it more, completely up to you. Um, but the thing that I would say about each statement and when you're planning them, you have your subject. So introduction, say. Then you want to have what key points are you going to cover in that? Like, what are you going to write about? Like, because you don't want to start waffling about something that's not relevant, doesn't give any depth or context to your statement because it's just a waste of words and it's not going to benefit you. And the reader's probably going to get a little bit bored. So get your key points. And then lastly, relate it to midwifery. So I cover this in a little bit, but relate literally everything to midwifery. And you can, like... Honestly, you can. You just have to have a little think about it. But that's the thing. You have to always think when you're writing. And I, I've done this ever since I did like my GCSEs. And I was like, so what? So if you're writing a point and you're reading it and it's just an empty point. So you're just making a statement without, you know, making a complete statement or, you know, saying its relation or why it's in there. Then that's very you know, it's very hard to read, it doesn't flow, and it does leave the reader thinking, so what? So if you're reading through it and you're thinking, so what does that mean? Why should you put that in there? Then you need to expand on it, because that is what they will be doing. They will be looking for what you can relate to midwifery, because they'll be looking at everything that you've done in life and how that will help you on the degree and as the role of the midwife. Anyhow, one draft that I will say, like I said, go away, have a look at different structures for a personal statement, see what kind of fits with you best. But one that I have down here as draft is an introduction. Then you want a paragraph on work experience and your academic achievements. Then you want a paragraph on your hobbies and the transferable skills that you possess. Then I kind of put in a little bit about my reading, you know, things that I've referenced to and current issues in midwifery to show that I have a knowledge of those. Again, I'll cover that a little bit later on. And then I finished it off with my conclusion. So have a look or use that plan, whatever you kind of want to do. It's completely individual to yourself, but make sure that you have a plan of what key points you're going to cover in each structure and then how you're going to relate each of those points to midwifery or, you know, to the core values of the NHS, like the six C's of the nursing and midwifery council um you know things like that tip number four so this is a very quick tip but it's so important and you've probably heard people say it before but do not do not waffle on about babies please <laughs> because the thing with doing that is pretty straightforward the word midwife means with women you know as a midwife handling babies is such a tiny role in what we play you know it's not a massive part of the career and the thing that 
the admissions tutors will be looking for if you put that in is she might be better suited to a different degree and a lot of the time people may be rejected on the back of that and they'll say we recommend you go for child nursing or something like that so you want to be so careful with your target audience which is not obviously we care for babies but it's not our main we are advocates for women and that's what you need to remember and that's what you need to get into the statement something that you could say though along the lines i did a little example because this is you know something that you could relate back to um babies etc was that you want to be a part of the immense gift that is bringing new life into the world so you know that touches on it but it doesn't go too into detail about wanting to just handle babies all day it doesn't happen like that number five getting through these quite quickly it'll seem quicker for you but like for me talking now it's going quite quick but my mouth's so dry I need a drink okay tip number five is to read and reference so like i said you kind of want a paragraph on stuff that you've read or stuff that you've discovered in midwifery this is when you talk about a specialist or topic of your interest to really you know limelight your knowledge and your passion that you have for the topic and for midwifery itself articles documents books anything around midwifery use quotations statistics you know establishments of documents etc all those little extras are what they will be looking for in your personal statement to show that a you've done your reading but b you can accurately reference to the reading that you've done because again that's such a vital skill in your essay writing in this section it's very important to not fall into the trap of the one born every minute or call the midwife these are very easy things to reference against because that's what the media portrays as childbirth and role of the midwife. However, we know as midwives that they're not always as accurate. We don't see the amazing childbirth in the raw, you know, in the raw and primal way that we know it can be. So I would try and avoid referencing to them or at least reference to them in too much detail because that's definitely not what the role of the modern midwife tends to be like. And again, they do depend on what hospital, what unit you're in, as to the level of obstetric to midwifery related care. So what I would recommend is to read up on any relevant or, you know, in the known documents around midwifery. So the things that I read up before my interview and I tell everyone to read up on is saving babies' lives, which is really, really important to prevent you know, newborn death. It's really, really important in the fetal health as well. Um, interpartum as well as postpartum it's really important um just things such as smoking you know diabetes maternal diabetes things like that that can affect um fetal growth and fetal progression after birth and um, something else which is very important and that is better births if you haven't heard of better births where have you been because it's everywhere so better births is what kind of sums up the continuity of care and model that we are now going to be working against actually most of us are now working against it to guess are now working against it so definitely skim over that i'm not saying you have to read it over and over but you just need to have a summary of what that kind of means in your head so that you can reference it and you can talk about it and you can have your own opinion on it in your personal statement something else that i would try and do is just to read up on it so there's books that you can get that aren't you know they are they're non-fiction but at the same time it's easy reading i would say so books that i love are the raw behind the silence and also birth like a feminist that book i swear helped me get my place at uni i referenced that so much in my interview and i literally had a full-on chat with the um lecturer about it and it was great and just expressing all the views they are books that have such strong views and you can form an opinion on them really really easy so it's so you know it's good writing to be able to reference something and actually show your passion show your opinion and you can really do that with those books because they're not heavy reading materials they are quite easy to read so definitely try and get some of those books have a read of them form your opinions you know go through highlight write any quotations down any facts that might interest you and try and put those into your personal statement as well one more thing in terms of reading and referencing is as well as the big documentation there's other things that are also very prevalent in maternal health and midwifery at the minute that you can kind of educate yourself on and possibly refer to in your personal statement or your interview should you be invited for one 
those things are delayed cord clamping, mental health in, you know, maternal mental health, that's also really important. Um, and something else that I would talk about is, you know, home births or vaginal births after cesarean sections. They're all things that have contradictory views on them and they have a lot of opinions from other people. So you can read up on that, educate yourself and give yourself your own opinion so that you can voice your own opinions in your personal statement. Let me straight on to tip number six. And that is what I've covered anyway, and that's relate everything, everything to midwifery. So it might seem really hard me saying it right now, but honestly, as you get it on paper, it's actually the easiest thing to do. You'll find little loopholes in everything that has something to do with being a degree student or the role of the midwife as it is. Much any skill can be a transferable skill to that of being a student midwife or the role of the midwife itself. So like I mentioned before, it's really important in this to not make empty statements. So you're always asking yourself, so what? So that's what I mean. If you're saying I'm a highly motivated individual and that's it, you need to think, so what? So what does that mean? So what does that mean I can bring to the table? So I'm a highly motivated individual. This means that I can work to my goals and reach targets within the demanding timescales. Something like that. You can summarise it up. You can expand on your points. That's really important when you're relating everything to midwifery. It's super, super prevalent to do that. In this point, it's really important to look and know the six C's and also look at the code of the NMC. These are really important because these are also personality skills and traits that midwives we should possess. This allows you to look at the skills that you already have and the attributes that you believe you have as your character and how you can relate these to the given attributes. So if you didn't already know, the six C's of the Nursing and Midwifery Council are care, compassion, courage, competence, commitment, and communication. Those are the six C's and they're so important. Write them down, revise them, don't forget them. They'll probably also come up at interview. Little handy tip. So when looking at relating everything to midwifery, kind of how you did with your structure, I would write down a list of all of your transferable skills and attributes that you think you have, write down what they can relate to and write down, you know, expand on your reasonings so you've kind of got your word what that relates to in midwifery and how you're going to expand on it so that three point thing will help you make structured sentences that actually give depth and meaning into your personal statement number seven so my tip number seven is to write with confidence and really sell yourself so again a lot of the questions i've got is how can i sell myself in my personal statement and honestly when you get in that mindset that you can big yourself up because I know in the life that we live in we try and not glow we try and not big ourselves up because it's it's out of character and it's not what we like to do we feel awkward we feel uncomfortable but you need to get in that mindset that your personal statement is the time when you can do that put all of that stuff that you've been saving up in your head you want to explode that ego onto paper because you have things that you can bring to the table to make you an excellent student midwife and an excellent midwife you know you need to remember why you're doing this you need to put your passion into paper to really really sell yourself and all of your skills it's important in this bit as well to kind of touch a little bit on your hobbies and what you do outside of anything academic or you know any work experience type thing because they're also looking about you as a person so you know if you like exercise say that means that you're determined you're motivated to reach goals or say you know you like art you've got a good attention to detail which means that you're very on the ball you know things like that any skill any hobby you can also relate it to the degree or midwifery itself um but definitely make sure that you're showing that you have a work-life balance and that you can actually bring more than just an academic student as you are a person with a personality and they want to see that come through as well i think something else that's really important when you're trying to sell yourself is emotive language so again if you don't really understand what i mean by that um it's something that you can look at on again bbc bite size or just having a look on the internet emotive language is something that really helps you express what you're feeling and what you're trying to get across um you know it's certain words that will really have depth and big meaning and give a big impact to the sentences that you're putting together um it will really just put on there your passion you know your willingness all of these things and just accentuate all the attributes that you're mentioning already tip number eight and that is 
grammar and rewrite. So I kid you not when I say that some tutors, if they see a spelling mistake, will put your personal statement to the side. It is so important, and I can't stress this enough, so important to read it, get someone to proofread it, check it on a check-in site like Grammarly, use Grammarly, okay? That saved my life, seriously, use it, you know? And draft and draft and draft again. Do not be intimidated by the amount of drafts and copies you will have of your personal statement. Even if it's not things like spelling mistakes, if you're changing around your structure, if you're changing around certain sentences, you will find one that reads perfectly and you will find the personal statement that makes you think, okay, I'm ready to send it. It's a big tip is to make sure that you are checking your grammar all the time. You know, little things like capital letters, punctuation, um, you know, compounding sentences correctly, things like that. And if you struggle with that yourself, if you have the support of um, a teacher or somebody in your access course or somebody like that, a trusted individual that you can get to read your personal statement and help you on these, and um, that's really important, but don't be put off by um, constructive criticism. That's also really, really important because you will get it in the initial stages of your drafting process. Just take it on the chin and take it as it's just gonna make your personal st statement better in the end. Something I do and something that I recommend if you can is to get somebody in the midwifery related um, sector to read over your personal statement, to see how it reads. Um, if you can't, obviously it's no big deal, but if you can, that's just something that I would definitely utilise. Tip number nine. Oh my God, I can't do that with my fingers. But anyway, tip number nine, know the role of the midwife. So this kind of relates back to the um, whole babies topic. If you don't know the role of the midwife, the tutors will disregard your application because they will believe that you're better suited to a different degree. So it is really important, especially if you're referencing to the role of the midwife, to actually know what they do. And that's why it's good to stray away from um, one born every minute or call the midwife, because those aren't always accurate representations of the daily duties and tasks that midwives have to do. So have a look at, you know, the responsibilities, what you do in a kind of day as a midwife. Um, so that, you know, you know that, you know, you want to research into what they're expected to do in a usual shift. Kind of what are their shift patterns? What's the difference between like a home or community birthing team and that of a hospital team? You know, you want to look at what midwives do and obstetrics do, gynecologists do. They all kind of link, but they're all very definitive roles. So you kind of need to know in your head what makes a midwife different to all of these other roles. Also, when you know the role of the midwife, you can really empathetically talk about parts of the role that really excite you and parts of the role that make you want to be the midwife that you want to be. So that's why it's really important. Have a read up. There's so many information everywhere. You don't have to go too much in detail, but you just have to make sure that you understand why you want to be a midwife, what midwives actually do, especially in the modern day and age, possibly how that's changed from how they used to do things. Tip number 10. So this is a really, really quick one, and that is to tell the truth. So whilst you're selling yourself in your personal statement, don't go overboard and over-exaggerate any skill, attribute, qualification or achievement that you have put on there because, you know, it will get found out one way or another. Truthfully, it will. And it's not worth having your whole application disregarded just for something like that. So be very mindful with what you're writing. There is a balance between selling yourself and then going overboard and unfortunately fabricating some of the things. Um, you know, you need to have confidence in yourself and that what you've got, you can bring stuff to the table without having to do that. Um, so that's why, um, you know, correct planning and preparation really comes into it because you can have that clear defined structure, which means that you know why you're saying these points and you have confidence in your points and your skills that you are possessing so you don't feel the need to do that but it's really important to read through and make sure that you are telling the whole truth and that you're not over exaggerating anything because normally in interviews they will refer to your personal statement and say if you've read if you say you've read a book and you haven't and they relate to it they will know at your interview that you have fabricated on your personal statement what i found if you're referencing the six c's in your personal statement and you best know them for your interview because they will ask. They will ask. So make sure that again, once you've sent off your personal statement, you keep a copy because you're gonna wanna read up on those things again before interview. But 
interviews probably another video i'll do further down the line but i hope you all enjoyed today's video i hope it wasn't too wordy whatever you want to do refer back to it at a certain time thanks for your continued support and i hope you like the video thanks for all your questions and have a lovely day bye guys <music>